Hello everyone, welcome back to a new session on dentistry and mouth. So today we have a new topic that is fluorides. So fluorides will be covered under uh, different sessions. So today's sessions will be covering about history of fluorides. So what is uh, so much special about fluorides in dentistry? Because uh, nowadays we see uh, fluorides in almost all the dental products like uh, toothpaste or um, our mouthwashes, our gels, everything has fluoride because it has proven that fluoride can prevent dental caries to an extent and fluoride is the most significant element which prevents dental caries. So how uh, we know that the fluoride can prevent dental caries, it is like almost a centurion effort by the scientist and epidemiologist which has ultimately reached a conclusion that fluoride can prevent dental caries. So we have to uh, study the history of fluoride, how the element was uh, invented, how it was found out uh, that fluoride causes fluorosis, then it was used to prevent dental caries. And all this will be covered in this chapter. And today's section will be covering about the history of fluorides. The scientists and their inventions, their contribution, and uh, the significant contribution by few scientists ultimately that contribution leads to the conclusion that fluoride prevent dental caries. So let's see the some basic things about fluorine. It has atomic weight 19, atomic number 9, and it is derived from a latin word fluoro that means to flow <coughs> and it is very electronegative element so it cannot exist as a element and it always stays like with the compound it combines with some other element and like calcium fluoride fluorospar sodium fluoride so it always <coughs> sorry So always it exists as compounds. So let's see the historical evolution of fluoride. So we have to start with a famous dentist named Frederick McKay. So in 1901, he finished his dental graduation from Pennsylvania Dental School and started practicing in a city known as Colorado Springs in USA. So there he found out in many patients some peculiar enamel markings and uh, he could not find any scientific literature to substantiate this peculiar enamel uh, markings and the discoloration or hypomineralization or the brown discoloration on the teeth. And he uh, called this enamel as mottled enamel. So it looked like white flecks, yellow or brown spots which are scattered irregularly and streaked over the surface of the tooth. So Dr. Frederick McKay was the first name you should remember. He was the pioneer in the fluorosis or the fluorine uh, identification or fluoride and dental caries or fluorine and fluorosis identification. So Dr. Frederick McKay in 1901. So he identified the Colorado stains or Colorado mottled enamel. Then came Dr. G. V. Black. So he approached a, another doctor or a dentist named G. V. Black. He was that time dean of Northwestern University Dental School. So he did not actually believe it, the theory of or the findings of Dr. Frederick McKay. But what he did was he collected some mottled enamel samples and agreed to attend the Colorado State Dental Association. 1901, 1909, and spent some time in Colorado. So he agreed to uh, visit uh, Colorado uh, Springs uh, for further investigation. But meanwhile, what our Frederick Mecca did was he did a study with the help of Isaac Burton, a Fleming. He did examination uh, among almost 3,000 children in public schools of Colorado Springs and found out that almost 88% of children were with mottled enamel. And he published the same findings uh, along with G.V. Black 
as an endemic imperfection of enamel of teeth heretofore unknown in literature of dentistry this was the first published uh, a finding of uh, dental fluorosis or mortal enamel but still they were not able to find out what was the cause so in 1916 mckay and gv black conducted studies on individuals that is from 26 different communities in usa and concluded that a particular factor in the water causing this mottling of the enamel and that was affecting during the tooth calcification so similar mottlings were seen in the city of britain so it was sitting in the usa not in uh, united kingdom so britain where the water supply people's drinking water supply was changed from shallow to deep wells in 1898 so it was found that people were born before 1898 were having normal teeth and people who born after 1898 in another another word we can say that people who started drinking the deep well water are started showing enamel mottling so it made them uh, made them believe that it was due to the particular factor in the water which causing enamel mottling the same thing was also happened in bauxite because in 1909 this water uh, changed from shallow to deep water then came another scientist hv churchill he was a chief chemist in alcoa company in pennsylvania so that time in USA, people were using aluminum, uh, aluminum for aluminum ware for cooking, but uh, they mentioned that aluminum util utensils cause poisoning because most of the aluminum uh, product that alcohol company taking from bauxite area because the aluminum just taken from bauxite and in bauxite there were a lot of dental enamel mottling so they thought this problem with aluminium because in bauxite region there are people with mottling of enamel so it could affect uh, us also because of this particular uh, aluminium product so alcoa company had to answer for this poisoning theory by the people of usa because of the bauxite region people showing enamel mottling and they thought that it was due to the aluminium and churchill uh, took sample from bauxite and did uh, analysis and found out that 13.7 parts per million of fluoride was present in bauxite water so churchill was the first person who found out the presence of fluorine in water and later he started um, collecting samples from various regions like uh, Colorado Spring had 2 ppm and the bauxite, as I mentioned, 13.7. Well near Kidder, 12 ppm, then 11 ppm and 6 ppm. So various uh, regions where this modeling were reported are having high amount of fluorine in the drinking water setup. But still there was no precise correlation between fluoride content and this model enamel. They, they could not establish a proper fossil link between this fluoride and modeling of the enamel thereby uh, this company proved that it was not due to the alumina or aluminum is not a poison it was due to the amount of fluorine in the water which is causing fluorosis or the modeling of the enamel at bauxite region so it was uh, to protect their company but uh, accidentally they found out the element fluorine so next came the famous epidemiologist or public health scientist dr h t dean or h friendly dean he conducted some landmark survey in the history of evolution of fluorides that is the shoe leather survey it is commonly asked question and it is very interesting the name is very interesting shoe leather survey so he was appointed um, by united states public health to continue the work of mckay so they wanted to uh, continue the work of dr mckay uh, what was the reason for this uh, modeling of the enamel and what is the connection between 
fluoride and this mottling of the enamel because by the time fluoride was already uh, into uh, picture and they wanted to show the, or prove that this could be a reason for the fluoride could be the reason for fluorosis or mottling of the enamel so surely the survey was done by trendly hd so his first task was to continue make his work to find the extent and geographic distribution of mortal enamel so he wanted to see how far it is distributed how much area it was affected so what he did was he started posting lectures to local and state dental society in country local physicians asking if mortal enamel existed in their area so almost 1200 letters he sent and 632 replies were received then he started his famous shoe leather survey dean and his colleagues started shoe leather survey among the 22 cities in 10 states of usa and collected a 5824 children and gave a report and why it was known as shoe leather survey because it was a door-to-door -door survey because he started walking uh, to each place or his friends started walking asking questions so it was involving a lot of walking hence it was called as shoe leather survey because of this door-to-door -door survey and a lot of walking and what they found out was a striking feature <coughs> you can see that this uh, blank one is normal enamel and this black one is mortal enamel so you can see as the ppm of fluoride is increasing the mottling also started increasing so you can see 0.6 ppm there is no mottling 0.9 there is very little or very mild mottling 1.7 2.5 2.9 3.9 and 4.6 the high mottling seen so they could found out that the presence of fluoride is directly proportional to the mottling of the enamel that was the biggest uh, conclusion of this shoe leather survey directly proportional fluorine and mottling then this uh, gave the report like a high concentration of fluorine water is directly related to the mottling enamel mottling was widespread in areas with water content more than 3 ppm with a discrete pitting if it is more than 4 ppm whereas mottling was less where it is 2.5 or 3 and no mottling was present where it is around 1 ppm so these were the conclusions of Schuller the survey so mortal enamel gave way to more exact terms so they started calling this mottling of enamel as dental fluorosis because the perfection imperfection was caused by fluorine so they started calling as dental fluorosis and in 1934 Dean standardized a classification of fluorosis and it is known as Dean's fluorosis index we have already learned it in our practical session and it was modified later in 1942 and in 1942 uh, he found out that drinking 1 ppm of water will, would reduce the caries by 60 percentage then he conducted another study 21 city study Okay, this is different from full other survey this was done by dean arnold and elvo in 1942 so what he wanted to prove that there is an inverse relationship between this fluorosis and dental caries because what he observed was wherever this fluorosis is present the dental caries was very less so he wanted to prove that the fluorine and caries are inverse relationship sorry not the caries and fluorine fluorosis and tendril caries so what he did was caries experience was investigated among 7257 children that is between 12 to 14 years from the 21 cities of four states okay this shoulder the survey was different it was done among the 22 cities of 10 states whereas 21 city studies were done in four states okay so it was done in four states but 21 cities it was to prove the relationship of dental fluorosis and dental caries but surely the survey was done to prove that enamel mottling and the amount of fluorine in water there is no caries in surely the survey
So in 21 cities concluded that there is an association between the increasing fluoride concentration in the drinking water and decreasing caries experience. So that was the landmark uh, conclusion which uh, created history in public health. Because they found out that maximal reduction in caries experience occurred with a concentration of 1 ppm of fluoride drinking water. And this became the foundation of fluoridation of water, fluoridation of toothpaste, fluoridation of all the other products to get a net effect of 1 ppm. So 1 ppm was approved by the World Health Organization in later times. Uh, so as to provide uh, fluorides to people with uh, less uh, or more caries area and less fluoride in drinking water, WHO only recommended to start water fluoridation to get the benefit of fluorine to prevent dental caries. So it is like double edged sword. If it goes very higher, it creates problem like fluorosis. If it is very less, it has no benefit and there will be caries. So it has to be at an optimal level that is 1 ppm. So this was the graph where they found out after the 21 city studies. So we can see that the ppm is on the x-axis and the uh, caries experience on the y-axis. Okay. So you can see there is an inverse relationship as the fluoride content is going high. There is a significant reduction in the caries you can see this curve is going downward as the fluoride is going on the x-axis so there is an inverse relationship between caries experience and fluoride so that's all about uh, history of fluorides so in next session we'll be seeing about systemic fluoride where they started uh, water fluoridation studies after this uh, world health organization or the not World Health Organization, uh, after this US Public Health uh, Service started uh, giving permission to uh, water fluoridations in certain cities and uh, it has all proved that uh, there was a reduction of around 50 to 60 seconds. So that was uh, a different story of the water fluoridation studies and it was uh, among uh, some six, seven cities in Canada and USA. So they all proved that water fluoridation was effective in preventing dental caries. So that's all about history of uh, dental um, fluorosis and uh, its effect with the dental caries. And uh, just for your information, fluorides are present all over the lithosphere, biosphere and atmosphere. So it is an inorganic fluoride compound and it is uh, this lake you have to remember highest natural fluoride concentration it is nakuru lake in kenya almost 2800 ppm so we were talking about three four five ppm and this is 2800 ppm that is lake nakuru in kenya and 15 states in india are affected with fluorosis some states almost 50 to 100 states these all are coming in uh, fluoride toxicity so I just want to show that some natural products which is having high amount of fluorine that is tea leaves having high amount of fluorine that is 3.2 to 400 ppm and the uh, fish products like salmon, sardines have fluoride content, cereals, banana, sweet potatoes. That's all about history of fluorides. It started from Dr. Frederick McKay, then G.V. Black, then Churchill. Uh, then came our famous Trentley SD. He conducted 21 city studies and shoe leather survey. Finally found out that giving 1 ppm fluoride in drinking water could prevent dental caries. So US Public Health adopted this uh, concept and started giving permission for water fluoridations. So after that, 1945, the first artificial fluoridation uh, started in uh, USA. So in next video, I'll be explaining more about this water fluoridation uh, studies uh, under systemic water fluoridation. So this video mainly includes the history of fluorides. 
uh, and various scientists, various uh, surveys and uh, landmark achievements by the uh, scientist. So uh, the next uh, sessions will be having systemic topical fluoride toxicity and defluoration techniques. But in India, there is no scope for water fluoridation because as I told you, 15 out of 30 states, including the Union territories are affected with endemic fluorosis. So we are into the action of defluoridation, but this community water fluoridation is a great movement and a great invention in the public health sector. And it was started in USA and uh, they continued this water fluoridation for at least 30 to 40 years. And in around 1970, since this toothpaste star into the market, which provide equal effect of uh, caries protection, it slowly started disappearing. All most of the plants were closed around 1970s because the same uh, benefit could be obtained by the toothpaste. So why to waste so much money? The installation charges for water fluoridation. But this was the this was how fluoride came into our dentistry and how it protected dental caries. This was one of the landmark invention or achievement by the public health. So I'll come up with a, a system of fluoridation in my next video.